Hello and welcome uh, to this podcast from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Uh, today I'm just going to be talking a little bit about QR codes. If you're not familiar with a QR code is, it's one of the many different types of 2D barcodes. If you're familiar with barcode, uh, like you buy when you buy products, there's usually what's called a UPC code, which is a standard for a type of barcode. Uh, that's a 1D barcode. It's, it's read straight across and it can hold not only numbers but letters as well so you can put words in there but it's very limited like a barcode is pretty much the length of a sentence where these 2D barcodes that which are read uh, usually in a square or rectangle of some sort uh, QR codes are very common and there's one of many like I said there's a, another standard that's very common uh, PDF uh, 47 I think it is um, which has nothing to do with PDFs as in portable, printable, port portable document files, portable or pr portable, portable document files, I think. Uh, a QR code uh, and these uh, PDF, I think it's 47, PDF 47s, and there's a few others. PDF 47 is the one, uh, if you look, at least in the US here, if you look on the back of your driver's license, there's a QR code, oh, not QR code, but a 2D barcode. That's a PDF 47. Um, let, me, let me double check that. Uh, it's a PDF, ah, PDF 417 is what it is. Um, and you can store a lot of data in these. And I found it funny, um, I don't know, I would say uh, probably six, seven years ago, I was talking to a buddy of mine at work and he was talking about how QR codes are everywhere and his wife is a teacher and they're using them in the schools and he's like, we need to stop using them or we're gonna run out. And I laughed because that's uh, kind of a silly concept of running out of QR codes. And the reason for that is it's like, not like there's a certain set number of QR codes, but it's the data they hold. And you gotta understand is that they can hold different lengths um, and also depending on what data is in there, whether it's just numeric, alphanumeric, I think you can even put binary data in there. Uh, the, the number of characters can vary very, but if you didn't uh, basic alphanumeric uh, with you know characters like periods, commas, question marks, you know basically what you would have on your keyboard, um, a tiny QR code can hold almost five thousand characters. Uh, and if you think of that in like terms of words on a page, you're looking at like a page or at least a couple of paragraphs worth of text in each QR code, and that's if you use the QR code to its fullest. You can have different size QR codes as well. You can have one word, two words, three words, you know. And um, so, and if you think about all the books in the world, and let's say just one paragraph uh, worth of data in a QR code, think of all the different paragraphs and all the different books and how there's all these different books and none of those paragraphs are identical. So basically you can put all these different, you're not going to have the same combination. You can put every written book, I would think, uh, not the entire book, but a paragraph from each book into a QR code, never have a repeating you know, QR code, and you still wouldn't use them all up. And that's writing stuff that makes sense, not just randomly generated characters. So the concept that we would eventually run out of QR codes, in fact, I just looked it up. I was going to try to do the math. And like I said, QR codes can vary in length depending on, well, obviously the size you put into it, but also the type of information being put into it. But I Googled how many unique QR codes are possible. And I wish that I could say this number for you. Uh, basically, it's... Um, it's two point a very long number times ten to the four thousand five hundred fifteenth different ways. Uh, so let me let me uh, I, I come in here and put this. I'm going to quickly put this into this, and so it's it's two point and then there's fifty two digits after that two to the tenth uh, power uh, to t times ten to the four thousand. 515th power. That's how many different possible combinations of QR codes are possible on the largest size of QR code, which is a um, 177 by 177 square uh, QR code. So QR codes are, are not going to run out. Uh, they're fairly standard, so they're going to be around for a while. I want to say that they're not going to be replaced with something better in the future, but think about how long just standard barcodes have been around uh, since the 70s at least, maybe even the 60s. Let's see. Uh, let me do the quick search here. Uh, Wikipedia um, barcodes. And there's different standards of barcodes too. Uh, but let's see, barcodes, 
And let's see if there's a year in here somewhere. 1960s, it looks like. Or let's see, barcode was invented in 1952. So they've been around for a while. And they're kind of antiquated. They're kind of not nearly, they can't hold nearly as much data as a QR code the same size. Um, still very useful, still around. QR codes are great uh, in comparison. You can literally put binary data in there, or even though it's plain text, you can put uh, base64 data in there and even store it like images and stuff. And actually, while I was looking up something to do this talk, I was looking at the Wikipedia page for QR codes, and I actually learned something that I didn't know about them. Now, I knew that NFC, near field communication, you can make a tag or a chip that uh, when you get your phone near it, if you have NFC enabled, it can open up a website, which you can do the same with QR codes. In fact, most QR codes you'll find out in the wild are in advertisements that are URLs. But something that NFC can do as well is you can have the information for a uh, Wi-Fi network. So you could have one of these tags somewhere and people can put their phone near it and it will give the phone the information to log on to the local Wi-Fi. Well, it turns out QR codes can do that too. And it's just a matter of typing out some plain text uh, and giving it information in a certain format, which I love when things are written in plain text because I can read it, I can type it, but basically it's just plain text. It says Wi-Fi colon S, and then you give it the SSID, semicolon T colon, and then whether it's WPA or WEP, uh, and then you do a P for password, H for hidden, or for if the Wi-Fi is hidden, true or false. Well, I made one of these QR codes using QR encode uh, in my Linux shell, scan it, and sure enough, just the default camera app on my uh, Motorola phone here uh, showed it as a Wi-Fi. So, and it asked if I wanted to add this Wi-Fi network to my phone. So you could have a QR code by you know the front entrance to your house. So when you have visitors, you can be like, oh, just scan that QR code, which most people, uh, it's very simple to get a QR code. You, there's a QR code uh, scanner. Um, in fact, there's JavaScript libraries, so you can have uh, a reader in a web page. There's also QR code uh, generators that are in JavaScript, so you can read and encode uh, QR codes right in your web browser, so you don't even need to install anything. Um, but a lot of phone, like my phone, uh, the default camera applications, if it sees a barcode or a QR code, it scans it and puts a little uh, icon up on the screen I can click and it will read it and detect what type of QR code it is based on the formatting. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't even realize they can scan QR codes even though they have a phone that's a scanner in their pocket all the time. Anyway, these QR codes, I just want to talk about them because I, I love QR codes. They're so useful and I just wish people would use them more and uh, they are going to be around for a while. So, you know, if you haven't played with QR codes, I definitely recommend it. If you want to generate your own, uh, you can use QR encode, which is, uh, should be in the package manager for pretty much all Linux uh, distros. Install that. I have tutorials on it. Uh, you know, you can search filmsbychris.com to search QR code. You can have it generate a image such as, uh, you know, a PNG. Uh, so you can save that image somewhere for use in something. But you can also have it output it in a... Uh, uh, Unicode or ASCII characters right there in your shell, so you don't even need a GUI interface to generate them. Uh, and then if you want to decode them on your Linux system, uh, ZBar is a great application that can scan things live from a webcam, or you can pass it a image file such as PNG, uh, JPEG, whatever, and it will give you whatever uh, codes are on there. And it scans not only QR codes, but standard barcodes as well. And there could be multiple on a page and we'll list them all out. Uh, so I definitely, I just want people to use them more. Uh, and actually I'm gonna talk about them more in the next talk when it comes to like corporate use of them. So yeah, check that out. I hope that you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also support me over on patreon.com forward slash melx1000. Uh, if you are already a supporter, you know that you get these uh, podcasts and all my videos early and available for download. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.